Welcome to Simplified Physics. This is the fourth lecture on dimensional analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about the dimensional variables, limitations of the dimensional analysis, and conceptual questions related to the topic. Let's begin with categories of the physical quantities. On the basis of dimensions of a physical quantities, we can categorize into four different types. The first one is dimensional variables. There are physical quantities which have dimensions but are variables, which do not have the fixed values but have dimensions. Such physical quantities are called dimension, no, dimensional variables. For example, force, velocity, power, work done, etcr, dimensional variables. The second category is dimensional cost and from the name also it is clear it must have dimensions but are constants. Such physical quantities are called dimensional constant. Very common example is universal gravitational constant. Similar velocity of light, acceleration due to gravity at a place must be constant but it has dimension. Similarly Planck's constants etc are dimensional constant. Let's see for the third type of the physical quantity dimension less variable. From the name also it is clear it must be a variable. It should not have a fixed value but it has no dimension as well. So dim no dimension, no fixed value. Such physical quantities are called dimension less variables. For example, specific gravity, specific gravity has no dimension but its value changes that means vary from material to material similarly plane angle strain etcr dimension less variable fourth category is dimension less constants such physical quantities have no dimension and are constant values for example pi exponential etcr dimension less constant and at the end of this topic we will discuss about the limitation of the dimensional analysis it is a very useful tool in the physics however it has some drawback first drawback is dimensional analysis cannot be used to derive the relation involving trigonometric functions and exponential functions throughout our discussion we have not seen anywhere of such derivations isn't it so simply we cannot deal with the trigonometric functions and exponential functions using the dimensional analysis so we cannot derive simply second drawback is physical relation cannot be derived by dimensional analysis if it has no dimension or simply if they are dimension less constants for such purpose we use experimental process or mathematical analysis should be used to de uh, determine the dimensionless constants but we cannot use dimensional, dimensional analysis to derive the dimensionless constant dimensional analysis cannot be used to derive the exact form of the physical relation if it consists of more than one term that means if there are in the form of the sum or difference in such condition we cannot use the dimensional analysis only if the relation is product type we can use dimensional analysis in the form of the sum or difference type we cannot use dimensional analysis next drawback is mostly we have dealt with the mass length and time so if it includes the other quantities rather than mass length and time we cannot derive the exact relation using the dimensional analysis it is the another defect and the next defect is drawback is dimensional analysis does not indicate whether the physical quantity is vector or scalar it doesn't give any information about the vector quantity and scalar quantity this is the end of the topic now we'll discuss some conceptual question the very first question is 
can dimensionally correct equations necessarily be a correct physical relation once think about this question and second question what about the dimensionally wrong equation Consider the physical equations. I have considered a phys physical equation b square equals to u square plus 2as and b square equals to u square plus as. What about the correctness of the this equation? P has the dimension same as u and as has the dimension same as u. That is dimensional. All the terms have these terms on the both side have the same dimension that is lt minus one whole power two is missing whole power square is missing square is missing all of them have the same dimension hence both of them are dimensionally correct something is missing here all the terms must have the dimension l t minus one whole square that means l square t minus two all the term have same dimension this is only in dimension of p only there is a square in fact in each term is it and in this case L T minus 2 for the acceleration more s is a displacement so L square T minus 2 for each term have each of these terms in both of equation have the same dimension so we can say both the both of them are dimensionally correct and what about the numbers pure numbers are dimensionless so it does not depend on the magnitude thus both of them are, appears to be dimensionally correct but one of them only correct so we can say that a dimensionally correct equation need not be actually correct physical equation but what about the dimensionally wrong equations dimensionally wrong equations are always wrong physical equation now let's uh, begin for the second question if two physical quantities have same dimensions do they represent some physical contents do they represent the same physical content or something different let's begin with the example linear momentum and impulse have same dimension that is ml t minus 1 and linear momentum is simply defined as mass of the body with its velocity it is simply a vector quantity in terms of dimension dimension of the p that is linear momentum is m for mass dimension m and b has the dimension l t minus 1 so dimension is m l t minus 1 and impulse is different as impact of force with time so the interval of time that is f into t simply defined mathematically f into t is the impulse acting on a body and force has the dimension m l t minus 2 into t has the dimension t so one t will be cancelled so m l t minus both of them have impulse also have the dimension same dimension m l t minus one now both impulse and momentum have same dimension however they represent the different physical quantities so we can say even if they have the same dimension they represent the same physical quantity okay let's see some more pair of or some more sets of the physical quanti quantities having identical dimension first uh, set is same linear momentum impulse have must have a dimension ml t minus one second uh, set ac acceleration acceleration due to gravity retardation gravitational field strength have the dimension l t minus one all of them have same dimension angular velocity frequency velocity gradient have dimension t minus one Similarly, work energy to couple momentum and internal energy have the dimension m l t minus two. Force, thrust, weight, tension, and energy gradient have also identical dimensions, and dimension must be m l t minus two. Is it? 
now let's go for the next question what are the basic rules for the dimensional analysis in fact in the and throughout the application of the dimension analysis we have used the principle of homogeneity of the dimensions in fact that is the basic rule the basic rules i have categorized into two different rules the dimensions of each terms on the physical relation must be identical that is the principle of homogeneity once again so they must have the identical dimension one more case they can be added or subtracted only if they have same dimension these are the basic rules for the dimensional analysis now one more question in the equation z equals to x plus y can the dimension of x y z be different is it possible to have the different dimension if the given physical equation z equals to x plus y is correct in order to be a physical equation to be dimensionally correct each term must have the same dimension yeah dimension on the left side and dimension on the right side must be same and they can be added x plus y here is the addition they can be added only if they have the identical dimension then only we can say the given physical equation is correct so is it possible to have the z equals to x plus y have different dimension if the given physical relation is dimensionally correct that is not possible x y z must have the identical dimension then only we can say z equals to x plus y is dimensionally correct otherwise the given physical equation is dimensionally wrong now let's go for the next question can we tell unit of the physical quantity from its dimension in general you know for a immediate uh, looking on the dimension of the physical quantity we can write down the or simply tell the unit of the given physical quantity let's see an example ml t minus 1 suppose a physical quantity has a dimension ml t minus 1 ml t minus 1 here is given ml t minus 1 then we can say on the basis of m m is kg l is length that is meter and t is the time second so kg meter per second will be the dimension this is not correct for the all cases let's see there are certain physical quantities which have no dimension let's see next example dimension of the angular velocity will be t minus 1 so on the basis of dimension it must be per second is it sufficient for the angular velocity in fact not the unit of the angular velocity is radian per second radian per second simply angular displacement has unit but it has no dimension so in some cases we can tell the unit but it is not true for all cases because there are some physical quantities having units but without dimensions let's go for the next question what are the dimensions of the x and y in the relation f equals to x plus sy what are the dimensions of x and y in the relation f equals to x plus sy where f is force and s is distance traveled let's begin with uh, from the equation f equals to x plus sy is dimensionally correct only if f x and sy have identical dimension on the basis of the principle of homogeneity of the dimensions they must have same dimension that means dimension of the x must be same as dimension of the f and we have f is the force so f has the dimension ml t minus 2 so use the principle of homogeneity dimension of the a must be a must it is not a make it correct dimension of the x some miss dimension of the x must be equals to dimension of the f so dimension of the x is not a a this is not a in fact x m l t minus 2 dimension of x must be m l t minus 2 now let's uh, try to find the dimension of the y moreover dimension of the x and s y have identical dimension so then only we can add them so dimension of the x is equals to dimension of the s y 
and dimension of the x just we have found that is mlt minus 2 dimension of the yes yes is the displacement so l and dimension of the y we are not sure about it so fine just simplify it ll cancel dimension of the y must be m l 0 t minus 2 in this way we can find the dimension of the x and y this is the end of the lecture and thanks for watching and in the next lecture we will discuss some more problems under dimensional analysis thank you for watching